Hello everyone, we're going to look at creating a bulkhead ceiling in this blog. Um, and what you can see on the screen over here is a ceiling that has been placed at a certain height. And it's offset at 2.6 into the sky. Uh, it often helps to put a little section through here just to see what it looks like. And there we can see we've got some space in between the top of the ceiling and the base over there. So what I'm going to do is create a little bulkhead ceiling and uh, then just show you how to how to make that nice and neat. Um, and to make it more interesting what we'll do is we'll put a space inside of that room and see how that interacts with the ceiling so you can also understand what one must do to uh, handle light fittings that might need to be uh, adding the amount of lumens that they add to the space uh, through the bulkhead ceiling and so we'll offset the wall of the um, bulkhead a little bit outwards and we'll see what that that looks like. So editing the profile, the boundary, what I'll do is I'll put in over here something like our bulkhead opening would look like. That is a pretty straightforward process and there we can see within the section as well it has created that as a um, opening and let's quickly have a look at a 3D view There is the beginning of the bulkhead ceiling. Right. So the next step, I want to have a bulkhead that is offset towards the top, and I want to have a recess over here of about 100 millimeters. Going back to my ceiling level on the ground plan level, <coughs> I create similar another ceiling. I'm going to sketch it this time, pick lines, and offset by 100 mil towards the inside. So there's one, two, three, four. I can accept that. And this one I want to have at an offset not of 2600, but perhaps 2800. Perhaps even a little bit more, say 3000. Great. So that would now have lifted that ceiling up above the other one, and I want to close it down here with another uh, part of the ceiling. Um, so one can model it in place, of course, as a ceiling component, but otherwise, the way that I prefer to do it is to create it as a ceiling that is thick. So I create a, a different type of ceiling. Let's tile the windows again. There we go. Maximize this window. And let's look at it through a wireframe. Uh, model style and then I want to create similar oh. Take my face shaded click right click create similar go out into wireframe there we go and this time I want to edit the type and I want to duplicate this and I'm going to call this the bulkhead um, sidewall Okay, and within the structure over here, I can see that it's got a finish. Um, I can delete that, and in the structure over here, oh, undo, control Z, cancel. Obviously, what I want to have is the finish as the uh, as the as the thin uh, as the display type. All right. So some people prefer to do these as. Uh, uh, let's go up. Some people prefer to do these as um, as walls, but then of course they don't schedule as walls. So let me go with the same sort of finish as what the other hand one has, and with the thickness, um, I'm going to go with uh, make it 200 for now. Okay. Okay. And then uh, what I'm going to do is sketch the ceiling again, and this time around I'm going to say, look, um, I just need to put this underneath this over here, so I'm going to pick lines and then I'm going to go around the perimeter over here so I'm going to go and select this with a zero offset and a zero offset and again over here zero and zero and then I increase the offset say to the thickness of that which I need uh, for argument's sake make it uh, 30 and there we go and so I offset that to the inside and this one and here we go again. All right, so it's an it's an annular profile that I'm creating. I can trim that to a corner.
Ahora bien. Ahora bien. Okay, we can accept that, and then let's go and have a look at that again within the section. So I can move this up. Uh, let's just see what the difference is between these two. Obviously, I've got it the wrong thickness. It's 148. What's the difference between here and there? That's 348. Right, so we just need to change the uh, the, s the this to 348 within the the thickness within the finish. Okay. Okay. And there we go. That's now nicely closing up that bulkhead. And as you can see over here, there's a bit of a recess. Uh, let's just have a look at that in 3D again. There you can see how it is now closing that up. Zoom to fit. Let's uh, go and have a look at that. Walk forward a little bit. Let's have a look around. All right. So there we can see our bulkhead ceiling quite nicely. It has been created. All right, so not too difficult, um, but also let's just see how the spaces are going to be created. Let's suppose that you were the uh, the 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 architect. Of course, all of these components can be rebounding, and then you would give that as a link to the mechanical engineer, who is then going to include that in his model, take it in as a link, and then he's going to create spaces. So, uh, but you can do it within this as well. So, my ground level model do over here is I'll place a space. The same thing will work with the room as well, but of course, for mechanical engineer space is better, and this does indicate it very easily with the right. So, uh, <coughs> within the room, we are going to place that space. Uh, here we are within the analyze tab. Here we can place a space. Uh, no, I don't need to place a space tag, and I want it to go to the uh, level one. And then with a zero offset, and I'm going to place that space right in there. There you can see go visibility graphics overrides. Then we can just make sure within the MEP, within HVAC zones, here we've got our spaces down here. There's our spaces. We can switch on the interior and the reference, and that's going to show me the color as well as the reference, which is that big cross. And we'll see that also within a. And this is the interesting one uh, within the section within visibility graphics overrides. We go down towards the spaces there we can see interior and reference apply and okay right so uh this item is not getting stopped by the uh room bounding elements so the reason for that tent one is because of the area and volume computations and that's not calculating the areas and the volumes if we include that then the space will be created like so all right so what we can see over here it's not filling up so Spaces and rooms act like gases in that they fill up their volumes, but if they get to a situation like this, for instance, where we have the ceiling and then a gap inside here, then that's not going to work. All right. So that's something to realize. Then also, uh, when we place lights, uh, we're allowed in 3D. All right, so yeah, I've loaded in a wall washer light, and that I may place in here there we go. All right. So the question is, how is this light's lumens added to the space? Well, to see that, we open the family, we edit the family, and we switch on in the properties that we want to see the room calculation point, and we see where is that located. So there we can see it is actually located quite far away from the light. It should be within the room. But of course, were we to want to change the way in which the room is calculating this, we can choose instead to drag it further away from the wall so that it could perhaps go and add to the room in a different manner. Okay, and By doing that, of course, we would just have to create a different family. Um, so that is actually quite easy. Save as and load into project and close. In this case, I don't need to do that. The um, <coughs> room calculation point will automatically uh, be added into the space. Right. So... The long and the short is uh, that is how we would create the um, uh, the bulkhead ceiling um, populated with lights, and you can create some really good effects uh, doing that. So, best of luck with that, and uh, please let us know if you need any help uh, further creating these bulkhead ceilings.